show you how beautiful they look when you place them on an actual statue. And this statue I renovated on a previous video. If you want to see the before and after of this garden goddess, check it out. I will link the video at the end of this video so you can see it. Uh, this is how these came out. And this is how the ones that I just did for you. And look at how beautiful they look. Hello everyone, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Today we are going to be creating beautiful, gorgeous concrete cement. This is cement because we're using Portland cement. Yes, cement roses that you can place outside for several years and they will not break down on you, okay? And this recipe is courtesy of at D as in Delta, Perry428, and I will put the link in the description so you can follow him and read all about this recipe, but it is a game changer. Holy Jesus, amazing. I use Holy Jesus, yes. I say Holy Jesus a lot. I say Holy Hell, I say Holy Cow. I say, oh my God. Sorry if some people are offended. If you're still here, thank you. I appreciate you. Let's begin. So we are going to start with what's called a metacaline product. It adds more strength and higher density and more resistance. So you'll have a longer lasting rose. So we're using it. Again, link will be in the description for you to buy all of these products. So we start with a cup of that. Then we move on to, very important, you have to use this the finest sand that you can find. And I found this in pet store. Oh, I forgot what it's called. Just go to your local pet store, go to the, uh, the fish uh, section and buy it there. The finer the sand, the better that this is going to look, the more detail your rose is going to be. So we're going to use two and a half cups of this. All right, now we are going to do five cups of Portland cement. I had the cutest comment the other day in the channel. I'm assuming it's a woman. I'm not sure, it could be a man, it could be anybody. But anyways, uh, they posted and said, I don't live in Portland. I don't know how I'm gonna get the cement. It, you don't have to live in Portland to buy Portland cement. It's actually available in Home Depot. I don't even know why they call it Portland. Hey, if somebody knows why, you're welcome to put it in the comments. I just thought it was the most sincere and the cutest comment I've ever heard in my life. Anyways, this is Portland cement. And we're using Portland cement because that's what he's requesting, I'm assuming, because it's very, very fine cement. Look at this. Very soft, very powdery, fine cement. Okay. And yeah, you may want to use goggles and you may want to uh, put a mask on when when um, you're working with this product. You don't want to inhale this stuff. Probably super dangerous for your lungs. I'm not because I like to live on the edge. Yeah. And there is one more product he suggests we use. This is reinforcing fiber and this again increases the strength of your mixture. Um, it's got like little hairs. And I don't care too much about this because I work with very detailed um, pieces that required, you know, my art requires a lot of detail. And I find that this little fibers kind of get in my way and make it very difficult for me um, to add that extra detail to my piece with this. Um, it suggests that you add a quarter cup of this. Mix, we're not gonna use water. Nope, sorry. We're going to use acrylic. I'll put in the link in the description, but this is acrylic. Um, water will just crumble this thing. Um, it won't, it won't, it's not a good adhesive, let's just say. You can find this at Home Depot as well. 
All right, you're gonna take some skewers and you're gonna cut these. This turns into amazing, beautiful clay. Ah, oh, look at that. I almost turned this into a ball. How beautiful is this product? Amazing. Okay, so what we're gonna do is you're gonna take one of the skewers, you're gonna dip them in this. And we're going to create the bud, rosebud. Too big. The bigger you create the rosebud, the bigger that your rose is going to turn out. Okay. I don't want to make it too big. Done. They don't have to be perfect. They're going to be completely covered. All right, 24 hours later, and this is what we have. Nice and solid foundation for you to now build a beautiful rose. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to Walmart or I don't know, any specialty store, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, and you're gonna buy yourself petal cutters um, for gum paste, fondant cakes, and you know cutter decorating um, things that are gonna be um, on the uh, cake decoration section and they're gonna look like this right like that and we are going to start working on the petals and I'm gonna take the small one take some acrylic take that's a wrap down roll it not too thin or it will break and we got one two Just a little bit. Wet this with your acrylic, some sticks, and let it fall naturally. And they're all gonna look absolutely different. And the more you do, the better you're gonna get at this, right? Okay. Let's put it right there. Next one. Bud and let it fall just like that, and we're on a roll. Let's add one more, okay? Same thing. Be careful. 
Very gentle right now. And again, they're all gonna look different. All right, we're gonna put this aside and let it dry. Show you what we're working with. Here's what we have so far. This is the first one we did, so we're gonna go ahead and start adding a bigger uh, petal. All right, we got a little bit more dough. Don't forget, the more you do these, the better they are going to come out. So don't be disappointed if the first two or three look funky. Um, don't worry about it. Let's continue, don't give up and try it again until you are satisfied with what you got. Placed it. Yeah. And it's gonna break. See that? That's perfect. Alright, this one came out a little funky. Let's see if it's good. Not it right there a continuation with the other one okay that's it see that all right we're gonna add one more here and one more here there you go so you take this this one and we're gonna put it right there you see that okay and come on come on come on see that right there okay the ends.
And there you have it. This one right here will last you many years outside because the petals are very thick. Okay, now comes time to paint these beauties. And what we are going to do is take one part steel to three parts water. And you are going to brush on this watered down paint as you see me doing here. After you're done, you're going to allow them to dry for at least three to five hours. Okay, now that they are done drying, you are going to take a plate, as you see me doing here, and you're going to put equal parts of your teal paint, brown, and sea glass colored paint. And in no particular way, you are going to grab some of this paint with a very dry brush, and you're going to tap your brush to... Um, the rose as you see me doing here just randomly and what you're doing is you are starting to create that distress weathered look once that is done then you are going to allow them to dry for a few hours and you have to allow them to dry because what's going to happen if you don't when you add on the new paint is just going to blend in with the old paint that's already on the rose Now you are going to move on to using the sea glass color paint only. And what this is going to do is going to create what is usually created on the surface of a piece of metal that has been exposed to air and moisture for a long period of time so this is what's called the patina and this patina forms um, like a scale on the surface of a metal that has been corroded with time once you are satisfied with how your rose looks then you are going to allow this to dry for a long period of time i say about three to five hours okay then you are going to take once again a very dry brush and you're going to grab some of the gold brass or copper color paint and you are going to lightly brush back and forth the edges of the petal and you are going to lightly brush the base of the rose as you see me doing here don't forget that you are creating the illusion that there is exposed metal underneath this patina weathered and distressed 
look that you just created. Continue adding more gold tone to the base of the rose, as you see me doing here. Very nice and lightly. Don't press down on your brush too much. And once you are satisfied with how the rose turned out, then you move on to the next one. Okay, and as for the white roses, this was super easy. So I took, um, I think it's buttercream color or vanilla color, and I will put it in the description, the actual color that I used and the brand of the paint. But I mixed it with just a little bit of water and I brushed um, the roses that, as you see me doing here and I allowed them to dry for a few hours. And now with a very small dry brush, you're going to take some of the brown and you're going to create some shading and shadowing in the interior of the rose as you see me doing here. And you're also going to take some of this brown and you're going to lightly paint the edges of the petals. Then you are going to take a very dry brush and in no particular way, you are going to blend in some of this brown as you see me doing here. Um, and it really isn't difficult at all. Just blend the brown a little bit. And if you feel it's too much brown, then take some of that white and then highlight the petals of the rose like you see me doing here. 